<laughs> As I said, what do you think the death of our Lord Jesus Christ accomplished? What do you think the words it is finished accomplished? Uh, I have three items here. I think there are some more probably, but this, I think this is the most important one. Number one, it accomplished forgiveness. It's accomplished forgiveness. Jesus took our sins on himself. He took responsibility for our guilt. He died in our place so that we could be free. So that our sins would not be counted against us. As it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. Not only that, this was a gracious act of God who put Jesus forward as our substitute. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God. The result is that our sins are not counted against us. Just as David said, How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, how blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute inequity, and in those spirit there is no deceit. It says in Psalm verse, uh, chapter 22, verses 1 to 2. Forgiveness. Love, a liberating gift. How wonderful to know that God has removed our sin and guilt because of what he did on the cross. That every day we can go to bed knowing that all our sins have been forgiven. And the number two that has been accomplished in his death, when he said it's finished, is an abundant life. Life is what human wants, but where can it be found? Are we born with it? Or is there more to life than that? Jesus knew that the real life consisted of knowing Him. As it says in John chapter 17, verse 3, This is eternal life, that they, know, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The death of Jesus allowed us into relationship with God again. It gave us permission to relate to God as pardoned sinners. Without pardon, we cannot know God or be friends with Him. Jesus' death removed the obstacles that stood between God and us. That is our sin and guilt. It cleared the way for God to relate to us as reconciled children. Now we can experience the abundant flourishing, powerful, exhilarating life that God pours into us every day. And the last one is the freedom from the rule of the devil. History shows us that long-standing power of evil in the world, everywhere people have lived, evil has corrupted their lives and messed up the wonderful and beautiful things they do. Secular history had been at a loss to explain this, and the Bible is clear that it is the result of the entry of evil in the world. <clears throat> Satan tries to deceive us and lure us away from what is right, <clears throat> and then he loves us to offer us futile, futile ways of getting right with God. Religious, secular, as long as it does not work, is the goal of the devil. His goal is to accuse humans of sinning. 
But the death of Jesus Christ removed the grounds of Satan's accusations. He has nothing now to point at us because of his death on the cross. Because everything is finished. His power is broken. Now we can live under a godly ruler who helped us live in the company of our God. Jesus' rule offers hope to the world. Rescue from evil is certain. His rule offers hope for us to live God's way. So those are the three main important things that accomplish that was the word accomplished because of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of the word it is finished, because it is complete. And these three things that have been accomplished, forgiveness, <clears throat> abundant life, and freedom from the, you know, accusation of the devil, manipulating our lives to his advantage and to lure us away from the control of our God. How can we benefit from this? It says in John verse, uh, chapter 20, verse 20, 31, it says, But this has been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. It's benefit. Believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Christ who, gave, who came to give His life for you. Believe in Jesus, put your trust in Him. Believe He can take away your sin, give you life to the full, rescue you from the power of sin. Ask forgiveness. Ask Jesus to take away all of your sin and guilt. Ask for full divine life. Ask to know and be known by God Himself. How can we do that? Is that, what, is that automatic in our life? I don't think so. We have, as as He said in in in, in the Gospels that, or in, uh, I think in Peter, He set an example. He said, "Be holy, for I am holy." That's our responsibility. Commit yourself to following Jesus, loving and obeying Him. Decide to give yourself, body and soul, to do whatever He wants. And He died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died and rose again on our behalf. I hope that the word is finished and give us new meaning especially in our daily life as a Christian. Because the word, as I, as I said earlier, avails you nothing if your heart has never been broken <coughs> to a consciousness of your sinfulness. Thank you and uh, <coughs> may our lesson that I gave give us the, a new insight of the, uh, the sixth last word, Christ. Thank you. 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 Our seventh last word is from the book of Luke, chapter 23.